At this time, I'd like to introduce our, our very special and honored guest. And I quite frankly know he doesn't need an introduction. But I will tell you a little story. So a couple of months back, I came to Sherry and Sherry. I'll let you figure out which Sherry's good Sherry and which Sherry's bad Sherry. Uh, and I said, you know what, in, in honor of our 65th anniversary, I'd like to invite Donald back. Do you think he'd come back? And I said, um, you know, do you think he would maybe come and have lunch with me and tell me a little bit about the company and the history and the legacy? And that lunch over fried bologna sandwich and a little bit of sample of sauce from the boss um, born the Legacy Center. And just the incredible amount of, of history that the Kaufman family has preserved so we could celebrate today and know from whence we've come from. So we have, I think, an even clearer vision in terms of where we're going to go. So at this point in time, I'd like to invite Donald Kaufman up, who was our second CEO in our company's 65th uh, history. Donald. I have to move the mic down. <laughs> uh, first, I'd like to thank Jerry Burris for inviting me to this celebration and welcome me back to a place that I spent 46 years of my life. I'm touched by your warm reception. It's great seeing some old friends today. But I'd like you to return with me to the year 1947 on the akron Barberton border when a shovel pierced the ground to mark the beginning of a new company called Alside. That shovel was turned by Jerome J. Jerry Kaufman to start a new company called Alside. Jerry not only founded the company, but he introduced the world's first baked enamel aluminum lap siding. Now attending that ceremony were a variety of executives and some 16-year-old kid who had no idea what this was all going to mean to him. As you can guess, I was that bright-eyed, bushy-tailed teenager whose main concern was sports, girls, more girls, and trying to borrow somebody's family member's car for the weekend. <laughs> and now it's 65 years later. I happen to be the only one still around from that time so if I embellish the memories, uh, there's no other one around to correct me. <laughs> well, construction began in a few weeks. Walls were partially up. A raging storm came through town, high winds, and all the wheels of the walls got blown down. Well, was that an omen? I think not. Not for Jerry Kaufman. That plant was rebuilt. Equipment was in there, and before you know it, we were operating as a business. Now, Jerry traveled around the country to open new dealers. Nobody had ever heard of aluminum siding. Most of the contractors said, well, what do we install it with, a can opener? <laughs> so, um, but he prevailed. He prevailed, and soon business skyrocketed, and Alcide was well on the way to success. So let's go forward to the year 1952. During the Korean War, they put aluminum on allocation. And our allocation was hardly enough to stay in business. We had to close for months at a time. This was killing us. You know, we were just booming. Well, we went to Washington begging, pleading. Finally, they gave us some aluminum allocation, and we were back on our way again. <clears throat> you know, there's a pattern here. Start to follow this pattern. Challenge. Success. So I joined Alcide on a full-time basis in 1957 after a stint as a legal officer in the Air Force. By that time, Alcide had used up all this land where the facility was, and we were making plans to move to a new location. So one fall day, Jerry and I went to New York 
on the East Coast to look at some of our supply centers, and no sooner I got there, I got a phone call. The plant's on fire. I said, yeah, sure. No, so the plant is really on fire. We rushed back to, to uh, Akron, and what we saw was a disaster. The entire plant was basically gone. The girders that supported the building were, were like pretzels. They were twisted. And downtown Barbara, Ohio, was covered with aluminum dust. The fire was so hot that the aluminum actually caught on fire. Well, what happens now? Well, fortunately, some of the equipment is preserved. But what we did was amazing, because in just a few months, we were operational again at a lease location. In 1958, less than a year after the fire, there was another groundbreaking right where I'm standing now, right here. I was there with the other dignitaries as Jerry once again turned the shovel to begin construction. Again, I'm the only one still around from that day. Now the plant and offices were completed at the new site, and we came back from this terrible disaster bigger and better than ever before. Many of you know the story about the mythical bird phoenix, where it burst in the flame and rose again from the ashes. That was outside. We rose from the ashes, bigger, stronger, better than before. And we didn't just survive, folks. We were stronger and better from every single challenge we made. In retrospect, our reaction to that fire was outside's recipe for success. We faced our challenges head on, took risks, learned from our mistakes, and embraced change. In every case, we didn't just survive. We got better. In 1993, or 1963, after an ill-fated attempt to go in the housing business, actually is where the Gojo plant is now, we lost the measly sum of $14 million. But the company was never in danger because our aluminum siding business and our building products business was still very strong. In fact, we used up our tax loss within a year and a half. In 1968, Jerry Coffin decided it was time to diversify his holdings and thought about selling the company. And one day, about the time that Alcide was starting to get into the steel siding business as a manufacturer, U.S. Steel came in and said, hey, we would like to be your steel siding sheet supplier. Jerry said, hey, I got a better idea. Buy the company. <laughs> and they did. $40 million later. Now, just one issue here. How, how does Alcide fit in with a company like U.S. Steel and their, and their business, business model? Well, they were smart enough to leave us alone. They bought us because of our management, and they decided not to interfere. And it was a win for both of us. Now, in 1976, Alcide was becoming increasingly, Alcide's labor was becoming increasingly aggressive in their demands. So a strike was inevitable. It lasted for 153 days. But fortunately, we'd build up inventory in our plant and our supply centers. And we manufactured. And you know how we did that? With supervisors, with secretaries, with executives. And we were working double shifts in the plant in the morning, in the offices later at the end of the day. In the end, we made the right decision so we could ensure the long-term success of the company. Now, Alcide knew its future could no longer be dependent on just aluminum siding, and supply centers were really steady selling windows and vinyl siding, but we believe there was a great opportunity for us to be in the manufacturing business of those products as well. So we decided to go in 19... 77 to go in the window business. Don Sponseller is here. He was, he was it. And uh, his hair was really black then. Uh, <laughs> we quickly learned that windows were not sliding. They don't always fit. They break easily. And if there are any problems, it's always the manufacturer's fault. <laughs> it wasn't easy, but we finally overcame our problems. And the challenge, again, stronger, better, and now the windows are one of our most important businesses. In 1978, we decided to venture in the manufacture of vinyl siding. If you thought the manufacturing of windows was tough, 
Wait till we got in the siding business. Because every piece of siding that came out looked like squiggly pasta. But this was just another major hurdle, and once again, we were victorious. Vinyl siding turned out to be the foundation for our future growth. In 1983, we suffered our worst year in our history. We had a loss. What happened next was incredible. Massive cost reduction took place. Pricing adjustments were made. We knew how to deal with these problems. Al side went, and this is incredible, from the worst year in its history, the following year, to the best year in sales and profits we ever had. A challenge met, success followed, and another miraculous comeback took place. In early 1983, my brothers Jerry and Mickey Kaufman retired from the company and I became CEO. Actually, Jerry had turned the reins over to me 10 years before that. And then there was a very significant change. U.S. Steel decided that they needed to raise some money to pay for their acquisition of Marathon. And along came Bill Winspear and Associated Materials and we were back in business. But we were faced with a dilemma. For 15 years, we had been using the U.S. Steel name. Everything said U.S. Steel outside siding. And our people were very concerned. How are we going to do this without the U.S. Steel name? I gently reminded them, folks, that outside was a success before U.S. Steel, and we will be a success after U.S. Steel, and we were. <clears throat> now, we went through a tremendous time of growth and prosperity over the next six, 17 years. Major challenge, major challenge came in 1990 when we discontinued our production of metal siding. I remember calling my brother Jerry and said, we're not gonna make aluminum siding anymore, we're gonna buy it. What? He said, well, our business is about evaporated, well, what are you going to do with that big plant? I said, well, we might make a window or two. Best I know, that plant is still filled to capacity and making all kinds of things. So in 1999, a search began to find a successor for me. I was approaching 70 and felt that the company needed someone younger to develop a long-range plan. In, 19, or in 2000, we found somebody and I retired in 2001 when I left the company. One last challenge. The Kaufman boys have managed this company for 54 consecutive years. What would the future hold? Well, my story stops here. I'm sure others can bring it up to date. There's a common thread through the first 54 years that's true in every single case. I've described all the different challenges, and we won every battle, every confrontation, and came back bigger and better than ever before. And there's a word that defines this company, and that word is resilient. It's defined in the dictionary as being knocked down, coming back stronger than ever. That's a legacy you're inheriting from us. Because you are resilient, like the Phoenix, I believe you will win again and again. <clears throat> Most of the problems in this company's past were not the result of bad strategic decisions. They were things that happened to the company outside of its control. Even today's issues in the economy are not within your control. But your future could not be brighter because the homes that need repair, they're not going anywhere. They're getting uglier and uglier. <laughs> they need to be fixed. <laughs> and there are good things on the horizon. New construction is improving. Now, your resiliency will manifest itself again, and you will capitalize on your opportunities and reach new levels of success and prosperity. Folks, don't forget to have pride in this company. <clears throat> Walk down any street in this country, and you will certainly see siding, whose roots began with the aluminum siding created 65 years ago by Jerome J. Kaufman. So thank you for letting me share the history of the company with me. You can imagine how wonderful it is to be part of this celebration. I've been gone for 11 years, but I root for you folks every day. Your leadership has never been better with Jerry Burris. There's a great hope and confidence for the future because you are so resilient. So it's been my honor and privilege to be here today, speak to you. Good luck and best wishes for the future.
On behalf of the AMI Board of Directors, all of the officers, all of the employees, we'd like to present to you Mr. Donald Kaufman a thank you to you and your family for an amazing legacy. Absolutely not. Okay, thank you.